I get to get back to work. Hey, shine like go. They don't want story, man. They want the sound bite. I'm like, no. Look around like they see you on the mound, they don't see you on the climb. Right? Me and all of mine in the power line. Look at this and what you find. Right. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Empower ED. I'm your host, Josh Levin, the founder and master electrician of Empowered Electric. And I wanna just say welcome, man. Thanks a ton for kind of taking a deep dive into the tips and tricks that make electricians great. And hopefully one day we're gonna do some things with plumbers and painters and HVAC guys and roofers because the trades are amazing. In 2020, most places across America, the construction indus industry was deemed essential, but I want it to become preferred. I want this to be a job that you don't just have to have, but that you want to have. That you build some of the most amazing coffee shops, breweries, restaurants, whatever. You're able to take people and say, hey, I did that and find pride in your work. One of the things that if you've, if you've paid attention to me at all, that I take so much pride in is conduit work. I absolutely love running conduit. I remember the first time I was in a lift trying to bend conduit into a box and the journeyman was like, hey, come down here. And he taught me the head check rule, right? The head check rule is you come down and you look up and if your head does this, it means you gotta redo it because it looks like crap, right? So last week we talked about uh, an offset, a very standard offset, a 30 degree offset. You take the number that you want to go up or down, you multiply it by two, as seen here. This was, what was it? It wasn't a 15 degree, or it wasn't a 15 inch, oh, it was a 14 and 7 eighths inch. So it made the math kind of complicated. Force yourself to do the math. Don't use a uh, calculator, don't use an app. If you gotta use a calculator, that's fine, but don't use an app to bend conduit. Today, we're gonna talk about bending a 45 degree offset in three quarter inch pipe. The rules are the same, whether it comes to one inch, two inch, three inch, actually all inch of conduit. The shrink might be different, which that's a future video, it's a very complex thing, but the multiplier for all degree offsets is the exact same for all sizes of conduit. So we are gonna use a three quarter inch ideal cast iron bender to bend a 45 degree offset in some three quarter inch conduit. Now. Unfortunately, three or sorry, uh, 45 is not as simple of an offset as a 30. A 30 you multiply by uh, by two. I'm using an Uglies book. If you don't know what an Uglies book, it's kind of like a condensed code book that gives you a little tips and tricks. I w I don't even know if I would call it a code book, but it will tell you some kind of cool things. Ooh, there we go. Check it out. You might need to do a little still shot of this and show it to everybody. So regardless of the inch of conduit, the multipliers for degrees of offsets are the same. And for a 45 degree, it's the multiplier of 1.4. So whatever our multiplier needs to, or whatever our offset needs to be in total distance, we're gonna have to multiply that by 1.4 between our two marks. So what I'm wanting to do here is I'm gonna want to replicate this just to show the different, different way that a 30 and a 45 looks. I'm gonna come out of this box here to this stud here and set a box at 86 inches like those. While we were at commercial break, um, I looked up how many wires you could put in a half inch or a three quarter inch pipe. It said in a half inch conduit with THHN, you could put nine wires. I'm just gonna tell you, just because you can put nine wires in there, doesn't mean you should. If you put nine wires in this conduit, even with just this one, two, 30 degree offset, 60 degrees of bends, when you went to pull it, it would be a son of a gun. So just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Just because you can put 360 degrees of angles in a conduit run, doesn't mean you should. So now I need to get my measurement from my starting point to where I'm going to this stud. All right, I'm using the Stanley Fat Max 25 foot tape. If you ain't using the Fat Max, you're wrong. To the center of the stud, we're looking at 16 inches. Did you get that, Brett? 16 inches, move my left arm. Why are you yelling at me all the time? 16 inches, see that? right there, 16 inches. So that makes it a little simple. 16 times 1.4, you got that? Okay, basic math here. So four times six is 24. Put the two up, four, five, six, boom. Bring a zero down, then you've got six, you've got one, you got boom, you got uh, four, two, one, two, 
Move the decimal point one point. You got 22.4. Boom. From mark one to mark two. I'm gonna grab a piece of conduit. I'm gonna use a shorter one. Um, I'm gonna use a shorter one because uh, I don't wanna use a big one, okay? Now remember, I'm talking in a controlled environment in a warehouse. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna prioritize safety, okay? Guys, I understand it's hot out. Your, sun, your sunglasses, your safety glasses fog up. You guys have gotta wear them. You only have two eyes, you wanna protect them. Um, you wanna use gloves. If you're on a construction site, I'm just gonna tell you all of Empowered Electric employees have a hard hat, safety glasses, gloves, and boots on at all the time. Luckily for us, we had a, a collaboration with Brunt Workwear. Boom, can you see those? Can you get those? You see those? Brunt workwear, Brunt boots. They're not trying to be the next Carhartt. They're not trying to be the next Duluth. They're trying to be something different. We say we're trying to change the face of construction. They're changing what construction workers wear. So Brunt boots, check them out. Not a paid sponsor, badass friends. End of story. So gloves, hard hat, safety glasses, gloves. Brett and Aaron really hate when I go on rabbit, rabbit trails. Rabbit trails, rabbit holes? Is it holes or trails? Who knows? Who, one of these dang rabbits. So, you can tell already, right? What does that look like, Brett? Conduit is jagged, right? That's Jagged Edge, featuring Nelly. Where the party at, right? Um, put your reamer in there, twist it, make sure it's, you know that song, right? Hey, where the party at? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Um, so, it's smooth as can be. Smooth as a baby's butt. Um, and there you go. So, I'm gonna take this. I already forgot my measurements. I'm going to make, yeah, 22.4, which I'm gonna show you a good construction thing here. So I'm gonna make my first mark at two inches, right? You see that? Two inches. Now, once again, you could do six, you could do 12. You do you. Be consistent. Know what you wanna do, know what you like, and you're able to easily tell somebody so if they come in later. So two inches, I gotta go 22.4. Do I come down here at 22? Let me get up here for you, Brett. Do I come up here to 22.4, which is damn near 22 and a half? No, because I made a mark at two inches. So I go to 24 and a half. Now that would be 22.5. So I'm just gonna, honestly, I'm gonna guess. With a 45 degree and the ability to tweak it a little bit, go back just a touch and you should be good. Now, one thing that I didn't do last time in the 30 degree is when you make a mark and you make them at the same place, what's the problem? After you bend the first bend, what do you do, Aaron, when you go to the second bend? You're gonna rotate it 180 degrees. If you guys can't hear him, he remembers. So, you can do one of these. Some people do a little dot like that. Some people just try to twist it and kind of do it whatever. Whatever you wanna do, since we know how to erase Sharpie, it's not a big deal, okay? Take the, the, the bender. Remember, I'm using the cast iron bender. So they have the marks, they got the arrow. There's the star, which we're gonna talk about that in a different video. 10, 22, 30, 45, 60. Brett, what are we, what are we bending? What offset? A 45 degree offset. Come on, Brett, Jeez, this guy. So I line it up with the arrow. You got that? Oh, Brett's struggling with the focus. Can you, if you can see it here. Now, here's one thing. Guys, it's like freaking, dude, this is as close as I get to like salsa dancing, okay? You got a good pivot. Now, I'm pushing down. You don't notice that, but I'm pushing down so that this doesn't slip out. If that slips out, see how that happened? Like if it moves, it can slip. The arrow won't be lined up with the mark. So I am have pressure down here. And when I go to bend, I'm bringing my foot here kind of like Taekwondo, dude. I'd be such a bad MMA, dude. Um, I put my foot here to block them. I line up the arrow with the mark and I bend it and I add a lot of pressure. I'm pushing down hard to the 45. A little bit more. Boom, perfect. The bottom is lined up with the 45. One thing I didn't talk about, which maybe on bigger conduit, it's more evident. Notice that I'm kind of up here. Now we know that you can get more pressure if I bent back here, right? Like you get more torque because there's like a longer angle. The problem is if I bend back here, some of this is gonna bend and the, it's not gonna bend just right here. So you want to kind of get your hands up here. Don't pinch your hands, but get up here and bend. Some people use their foot, they flip it upside down like this and bend it. We're gonna talk about that in a different video. Those people, don't do that. 
bend a 45 or a 30 like I'm showing you. I push it in to the mark, I slide it. Oh, Brett, can you, are you able to, do you know how to work a camera? Um, see, because I made those dashes, I'm able to locate this really, really easy. I pull it straight, I look down the pipe to make sure that it's not dog-legged. I kind of want to dog-leg it just to show you what it looks like. Um, not really. Line it up, bend it, bring it on a little bit more. Boom, should be good. Might be good, we shall see. So, I don't know if you can see that, how straight that is, it goes straight. It would look like a freaking, what? kind of looks like Lockwood's monster right there, doesn't it? So, put it in here, see if it lines up. So that straight right there. So, ooh, this is good right here. So look, see how it starts kind of straight and then it goes crooked a little bit. This needs to be brought a little straighter and this needs to be bent a little more for it to go straight. One thing in construction, especially dealing with like old buildings, especially buildings that have brick, sometimes things it's better for things to look level than be level. It's better for things to look straight than be straight. And what I mean by that is, this might be the right bend and that stud might actually be crooked. It's better to get them to match so that both things look straight. Some purist, some electricians out there would fight tooth and nail and would put something up level and make everything else look bad and then point out everybody else's uh, shortcomings i promise you if the only way you get ahead is by tearing other people down you might get a promotion here and there but ultimately you will not succeed you need a team to succeed you can't build a building by yourself look at that way better right way better so now i know i know that my box here boom is 86 so I'm gonna go here. I wanna make a mark at 86, right here. But this mark at 86, what am I gonna put there? I'm gonna put a four square box. So I gotta delete two inches, so right there, okay? And then just for giggles, rather than matching this right here, I'm just gonna see what the middle would be. So we're at 14 inches, so I'm gonna put a strap at seven inches right here. Okay, so I'm gonna put a strap there. So, you guys are such a great audience. The comments below and the engagement that we're getting is so much fun. It's the construction workers that I really enjoy, people that are passionate about their work. I wish I could use a bandsaw, but somebody stole my freaking bandsaw blade and I'm too gosh darn busy to run to your local Lowe's and get another one or Home Depot. So I'm using the Milwaukee, uh, what is it? Hacksawzall, Hacksawzall? Hacksawzall, okay. Um, put it on the mark, get your thumb away. You don't want to cut off your thumb. I put, I put some good pressure. Let the saw do the work, okay? Let the saw do the work. Quick in the dead, did you see that? Sharon Stone, you ain't got nothing. Leo DiCaprio, bang. Feel it, it's good, it's good to go. I've got my box, and as you can tell, um, my cart, well, not that one, but uh, my cart is pretty freaking organized. The best way to be productive and fast, have an organized cart, okay? Boom, pop it out, here we go. It's three quarter inch pipe. So put my pipe in. Push this in. Here we go. You only, you only have to put a stinger where a splice is made, but we know that a light or a plug or something is gonna be put up here. So even right now, it's beneficial to put a ground stinger in. The reason that I like using minis, if you don't know what a mini and a one hole strap is, it's two ways to secure the conduit to a stud or to a salt or a flat surface. A one hole strap would push the conduit all against, all the way against the stud, and I would have to bend a box offset to get the conduit in the box. 
but a mini kind of holds it off. I don't know if you can see that, but the mini holds it off about a quarter of an inch so that it can go straight into the box um, without a box offset. So there we go. We get to compare. Uh, we get to compare a 30 degree offset to a 45. Now, a 45 degree offset, a 45 degree bend is harder to pull through. Because think about it, this is 60 degrees, 30 plus 30, 45 plus 45 is 90. This is like pulling through a 90. It might not seem that way, but it is. So you want to avoid this, but it does give you a little bit more uh, length on the verticals here. I probably could have brought this up to a foot and had a foot here also. So there are some applications in which it is good to use a 45. If you can do a 30, do that. Um, what did we learn about a 45? So as you look at it, you see the bends are very professional and good. Um, they're level. Now they might, remember I had to tweak them a little bit because it's important to look level, not be level. Things that look professional are professional. This conduit here with the straightness of the stud, with the uh, strap, you know, within three foot of the box, within three foot of the box, we know that's the case. Um, in case you don't know, um, a conduit has got to be strapped within three foot of the box. This is, I mean, it's like 35 inches. 35 is like 35 inches. So. We're strapped, we're straight, we're bent well, we're not dog-legged, we don't have ripples in our pipe. 45 degree multiplier is 1.4. That's kind of a little difficult. Do not use an app. Fight the urge to pull out your phone and use it as a calculator. Use, use scrap uh, cardboard that from boxes. Um, write it down, practice math. Math is so big in electrical, you've really got to develop that skill. Um, guys. If you wanna see more, keep commenting, keep subscribing. We do this to try to bring, uh, shed light on the electrical trade. Construction is freaking awesome, dude. I love running conduit. I love turning on circuits and seeing things come on. It's a hit of dopamine every time you turn on a circuit and lights come on the first time. I know that you're passionate about your trade too. Probably electrical or you wouldn't be following this channel. Be sure to share it with your friends. If you're in the Kansas City area, reach out to us, 816-500-9452. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you guys next week.